the atonement. What is it? Who is it? How shall we partake in it? What does it mean to be atoned? Let us begin, if you will, with Galatians chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, then take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else for each one should carry their own load nevertheless the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things good things with their instructor do not be deceived god not, god cannot be mocked a man reaps what he sows Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in good doing, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of flesh are trying to compel you to circum be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the Christ of in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world atonement what is it who is it How can I partake in it the gospel of Jesus Christ always presents us with an issue of will. Will I accept God's verdict on sin in the cross of Christ? Have I real daily interest in the death of sin in my life, in the death of Christ? Do I want to be identified with his death? Or am I still preoccupied with the things of this world? Jesus says, this is not our home. We have a home not made of stone. But am I still preoccupied with the things of this world? To be identified with his death, to be killed right out in all the interests of sin, 
in this fallen world, in this worldliness, in self, to be identified with Christ that I am no good for the things of this world is the whole point. The great privilege of life is not about loss, but about gain of eternal life. The great privilege of discipleship, of being a disciple of God, is that I can put in my username and password and enter into the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light. And that means death to sin, death to my ideas, death to human holiness, and yes, to Christ's holiness. That means getting rid of regrets and the ideas of mankind and pressing forward towards the mark of the higher calling. Get alone with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit and tell him what you do not want to die out in you and think about it or tell him that at all costs you want to be identified with his death so that you might be identified with his life. It takes a supernatural connection with Christ, with the Father through the Holy Spirit, to come into a oneness with Christ, to identify with his death. You see, to be identified with his death is to know that you know that you know that you have passed from yesterday until tomorrow. That all things have been made new, as in Revelation chapter 21. The proof that you have been identified with Christ, that the old man is dead is the ease at which you are willing to let go that which you imagine that you wanted most in this world. It is not about a lack of love of another or even of yourself, but it's about seeing beyond the veil into the heavenlies. Did not the scriptures tell us, know no man by the flesh but by the spirit? Not even our own selves, certainly not Christ. Did not the scriptures tell us that in each of us is the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit? Did not the scriptures tell us that the kingdom of God is within man, even now? And again, our Lord, let us see what we'd be like if we were not for him. In those moments of despair and regret and in all these things, we recognize that that would be me, but for the death and the payment of Christ, that I might be atoned, made one with him. Without Christ, we can do no thing. That is why the bedrock of Christianity of a personal relationship with Christ is a passionate devotion to all things Jesus. Do not mistake your first introduction to the confessional, confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord as the purpose of God in getting us there. That's not it. It's more than that. 
His purpose is getting us to the place where we realize that all identification with Christ, all and everything is what this is about. When Jesus said, I, I do nothing except that I see my father do it or hear my father say it, that is the point. When Jesus says, the day would come that you may go to my father who art in heaven and he shall give you whatsoever you say in my name. That is the point. True sincerity and honesty before God means that what appears and reality are the same. What you do and what you say and what you are internally are the same. You have become one, at one, with yourself. God's atonement is a complete work, not a partial work. Paul experienced such a transition in the struggle that he writes about when he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Whatever I would do good, evil is ever present with me. The things I want to do, I cannot, and the things I don't want to do, I do. But God says, my grace is sufficient. And after a while, he then writes, the life that I live in me is Christ and Christ alone. Is that you today? If you're struggling with giving up something in this world, then keep hope alive. Hope and expectation about identification with Christ, a one at one. Believe God and not man. 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 Believe God and not man today. God forbid that I should glorify or glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, all else is vanity and vexation of spirit. The scriptures tell us that he would give us an abundant life. He did not say that he would give us a life of abundance. But he did say, we shall have a new heaven and a new earth. Set aside your regrets. Look to the Lord and place what you want in this life on the cross, at the altar, and leave it there. Press forward towards the mark of the higher calling. Step back into the call that is upon your life. For it is there that the spirit within you is fed. This is the meat that is necessary to deliver you, to keep you, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Partake in the atonement. Partake in the death of the things of this world. For there is a place prepared for you and for me. If it were not so, he would not have told you so. He said, in my father's house are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would not have told you so. God bless you. This is Pastor Joe. And let the life of Christ 
through his death, through the cross and resurrection, become one in you. Return back to your first love and know that everything that you need, the glory, not just the story, is not just about Christ, but about you. This is Pastor Joe. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me and you. And in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. God bless you. Bye-bye. By the way, I have a question for you. There was a woman in the Bible who waited to make atonement for her husband's behavior. She was a wife to become a wife of David. Do you know who she was? In this, that woman became a type of Christ. Bye-bye.